Hi everyone, welcome to lesson two in this series on vocal resonance or vowel resonance. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the concept of vowel purity. And one of the first questions that comes up when we think about vowel purity is whether or not that means that we have to sing our vowels or aim to sing our vowels exactly as they're written on the page or exactly as we pronounce them in speech. Well, that is actually the topic I'm going to answer or the question that I'm going to answer in the third lesson in this series. So stay tuned. If you have not already subscribed and click the bell icon, please do so now so that you'll be notified when that next video is posted. But I'm going to give you a little bit of a teaser. So the answer to that question is no, that is not what vowel purity means. In fact, it's actually impossible physiologically and acoustically for us to sing our vowels exactly as we speak them, especially in singing where we sing at higher frequencies, higher pitches, and louder dynamics. And there's a greater need for vocal efficiency and for beauty of tone. So how we sing our vowels is not necessarily going to be exactly how we speak them. So stay tuned for that video. Now, as I see it, there are really two facets or components to the concept of vowel purity. The first pertains to the physiological, to how our articulators, our tongues, jaws, and lips, shape our vocal tracts to be able to form those different speech sounds. And the second pertains to the acoustical, that is the sound itself, the sound that we hear as the vowel. Now, if we are a linguist, generally speaking, we're going to be focused a lot on the physiological on what the vocal tract is doing and how it's shaping and how the articulators are moving, if there's a gliding movement between the different sounds, or whether the shaping is relatively stationary or fixed for the duration of that particular sound. If you're an acoustician, somebody who is expert in the field of acoustics, you're going to be focused primarily on sound, the sound that results from that physiological shaping of the vocal tract. And that makes a lot of sense because it really is that vowel's unique acoustical fingerprint, its unique spectral characteristics or acoustical properties that help to identify that particular vowel sound to the listener and help the listener differentiate between the different sounds in our language. And as singers, we need to become expert in both areas. We need to learn to be able to masterfully shape our vocal tracks so that we can mold and shape our sounds into the sounds that we want them to be. And also so that we can have clarity of diction, so that we can have beauty of tone, we can have efficiency, and we can just have ease of production in general. So when I think about the physiological aspects of vowel purity, I really think about whether or not there is a constancy of vowel definition and whether or not the way that we are shaping and moving our articulators is helping us to tune our resonances effectively, to really focus in on the clarity of our sound, to really maximize the resonance potential of that particular sound. So for example, in English, we have a lot of diphthongs. Those are vowels that are comprised of actually two vowel sounds, I, ow, oi. So they have an on glide, which is usually a short vowel sound, followed by an off glide, which is a long vowel sound. And these diphthongs occur within one syllable, so one beat, ow, i, oi. Now, in singing, diphthongs don't really work very well, and there's a reason for that. As we're moving from one speech sound to the next, in this case, let's say, i, i, as we're moving from one to the other, we are moving our articulators. Whenever we move our articulators, we're changing the resonance characteristics of the vocal tract. And what happens is we create transitional resonance or transitional noise. There's a little bit of a muddying of the resonance. So if you think of it in terms of tuning, manually tuning a radio, so you're turning the dial from one, one side to the other, right, to try to home in on the clarity and the sound. So if you're moving from one station to another, in between that, there's some static, there's some noise. Well, it's like that with our vowels. When we're singing diphthongs, 
we have a gliding movement between the articulators from one speech sound to the other, from one vowel sound to the other. And so in between there, we get that muddying of the resonance. So ideally in that situation, what we want to do is we want to target the on glide, the first sound within that diphthong. And we want to sustain that. And that's where you want to be able to tune the radio dial right there to the point at which the sound is the clearest. Now it's not only diphthongs that can be negatively impacted by this transitional noise. Theoretically, when we're singing a pure vowel, which I'll get to in a moment, we are only singing one vowel sound within the syllable. And theoretically, our vocal tract should not be reshaping for the duration of that vowel sound. However, a lot of singers prematurely reshape their vocal tracts in anticipation of the sound that follows, or they're a little bit slow getting to the vowel from the sound that precedes that particular vowel. And so what ends up happening is they don't target that clarity in the sound in that station, or they don't hit that bullseye, the pitch centeredness and the clear quality of that particular vowel, or they start to reshape mid vowel or as they're sustaining it, and then they start to get that muddying of the resonance and that static in the sound. So when we're sustaining a vowel sound, even if it's a brief sustain of that particular vowel sound, we want to make sure that we're targeting that clarity and then keeping it there for the duration of the vowel. So I would call that constancy of vowel definition. We want to make sure that how we define the vowels, how we shape them with our articulators is not changing mid vowel. In voice training, we often focus on the five pure Italian vowels. Yes, I know that there are seven Italian vowels, all of which are pure. However, we have five vowels in particular that we tend to use a lot in vocal training. A, E, E, O, and U. We use them for a lot of reasons, one of which is that they're just frequently occurring. They occur in every language in the world. And from those particular vowel sounds, there's only a slight adjustment of the vocal tract that's needed to be able to get us to the different vowel sounds, the other vowel sounds in our language. So they make great training vowels because they're sort of target pivotal vowels for us to work on. So the reason why those vowels are considered pure is because they are not characterized by any gliding movements of the articulators. That is, they're not diphthongs. So they're great training vowels for that very reason because they encourage a stability, a consistency within the vocal tract, that constancy of vowel definition. Now before you go today, I do want to have you do a little experiment with resonance tuning in your own voice. That is finding that clarity in the sound, tuning that dial, and homing in on the pitch centeredness of the vowel. This is a really important concept for us to understand because vowels have pitch. You may recall from an interview that I did with Professor Ken Bozeman in which we talked about the resonance frequencies of the vowel and, and resonance tuning in particular. And at one point, Professor Bozeman tapped on the side of his larynx as he was shaping his vocal tract for the different vowels, a, a, e, o, u. And we can actually hear that each vowel has its own pitch. That's the, you know, that would be my thumping on this tube and changing for different vowels, changing the shape of the tube to show the first form. It moves around quite a bit from vowel to vowel. And it's important to understand that that pitch is changing because we are reshaping the resonator. We're changing its dimensions, its internal dimensions. And that in turn is causing different frequencies to be heard. It's resonating at different frequencies. So you'll recall from earlier on, I talked about how vowels have their own acoustical fingerprint, something that identifies them to the listener and that helps distinguish them from other speech sounds. And that may be called sort of an acoustical envelope. And as long as the acoustical result of how we're shaping our vocal tracks falls within this envelope, the resonance frequencies fall within this envelope, the listener will understand the vowel that we're singing or speaking. However, if we start to go outside of that envelope, 
we will start to muddy the resonance. And then if we go even further outside that envelope, we will start to speak or sing a different sound altogether, a different vowel altogether. So I want you to take a moment now to just play around with reshaping your vocal tract. Sustain a vowel sound, any vowel sound will do for now, at a comfortable sp speech inflection pitch. And then I want you to slowly reshape the vocal tract. It might be good to isolate one area of adjustment first. So for example, the tongue. So start to sustain this vowel sound. Let's say it's an ah, and then start to play around with the shape and position of the tongue. Move it a little bit higher inside the mouth space. Move it a little bit lower. Move it a little bit more forward. Move it a little bit further back and see what happens to the sound. How far can you take that sound before the resonance starts to muddy and it starts to sound like an indistinguishable vowel? How far can you take it before it starts to sound like a different vowel altogether? And then you can start to do the same thing with your lips. So now sing that vowel sound, sustain it on a comfortable pitch and start to reshape the lips, purse them a little more, round them more, spread them more and make these changes really, really slowly so that you can hear the subtle adjustments and the effect that they have acoustically. And then again, listen to what happens to the vowel. Are you hitting that pitch centeredness? If you are, what will likely happen is you'll notice that there's an efficiency within the sound and also there's a ring. You'll start to hear this really clear crystal bell like ring acoustically. And that's when you know that you have found the pitch centeredness of that vowel. When that vowel is compatible with the pitch that you're singing. All right. Thank you so much for watching today. Please let me know if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comment section. I'll do my very best to answer those questions for you. And if you haven't already done so, please take a moment to click the thumbs up button to let me know that you appreciated this video and also consider subscribing and clicking the bell icon so that you'll be notified when I get lesson three posted. Happy singing.